and uh, today we'll be dealing with some very very important concepts in uh, acupuncture these are the building blocks from where you you, you can just have an idea how to um, uh, have an approach towards a patient or a disease and uh, i'll i'll be explaining you the concept of uh, uh, my own concept i developed is biophysics i i call acupuncture as biophysics and in a short while you you will also come to understand that why i say so so in in the meanwhile i'll be dealing with uh, it will be going this going to be a three day uh, session and uh, i'll be exhaustively covering various uh, concepts of uh, uh, physics uh, acupuncture and i'll be linking them with the uh, medical science as well so let's start so the topic is you all know we will be dealing with the vital substances these are the building blocks of our body essence chi blood body fluids and mind so we acupuncture only goes around these things so before coming to the topic i would like to give you an idea about the concept of physics and why the question comes to should come to your mind is why am i on i am talking about the concept of biophysics why i am talking about physics so much i am a doctor so why i am speaking this much so the answer is see as you are aware of the fact that we are the part and parcel of nature and let me tell you and you must be aware of the fact that all the laws of physics operate in the nature in the universe around you okay so <clears throat> so they are applicable outside so they must be applicable in your body and in and in the coming uh, lectures you will be able to clearly understand that how these concepts of physics apply in your body whether it is to yoga acupuncture anything any any regular therapy and why we are able to give such a treatment at the root cause the patient gets healed up and why the modern medicine is not able to deliver that those kind of results the answer is very simple see everything around you okay is energy and some some or the other form of energy is operating in the universe okay so when if you are ill so it means there is some disturbance in uh, in 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 the flow of energy or related to something to energy okay so if your physics is bad if your physics is disturbed you will take the help of a physics teacher or you will go to a chemistry teacher because in modern medicine what we are doing is we are dealing with the chemicals the pharmaceutical chemicals okay the approach is totally different in uh, as far as the modern medicine is concerned and on the other side if you see to go and uh, acupuncture the color therapy the nail therapy and all that so they all work on the physics uh, the principle of physics so we'll be starting with physics itself in this we have to understand the nature then we need to understand the physics in a better way but i'll not be going in much deep i'll be taking some basic concepts and you must be aware of those things so as you know that all around everywhere there is matter so matter is everywhere and matter is made up of atoms now it is the position and spacing between the atoms which decides the nature of a particular thing whether it will be solid liquid or gas okay so let's take if there uh, what will be there in uh, the condition in gaseous form that molecules will be vibrating at a much higher frequency will be having much more energy and the molecules the atoms will be uh, the spacing between the two atoms will be more contrary to solid the spacing will be much 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 less the 
frequency of vibration will be much low and that is why we will have a solid state so let's take an example of water if we heat it up or we give some yang energy to water the molecules will go apart because they are vibrating now at a much higher frequency because they have taken the energy that is the yang energy the heat energy and they are they have started vibrating at a higher frequency and they are moving apart from each other so that becomes a gaseous state on the contrary if we cool down the liquid or the water it turns into ice because the molecules get close together enough to become a solid form so these similar things are happening in your body because in acupuncture we talk about chi chi is 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 qi and qi is termed as chi in chinese so i'll be saying it chi okay so chi is nothing but the energy around you the energy in your body so the nature of energy is such that if it gets accumulated somewhere it will be manifested into a physical form or it can remain at a very subtler level so that becomes like mind okay so mind is a very very rarefied form of chi now essence if you come to essence is a very dense form of chi so nothing in your body everything in your body is chi is nothing it only the the form gets different okay essence is a dense form and the mind is the rarefied the rarest form uh, okay the, the lightest form of chi available every everywhere the function changes and uh, the nature changes but ultimately it's the original chi we have so in between we have the blood the body fluids which have their own uh, functions in the body but all together they are all interchanging into one another they always interchange into one another so what we say in physics is the energy cannot be created neither can be created nor destroyed it can change its form so that principle is also applicable that essence can change into chi and uh, chi again essence can change into mind all these uh, concepts will be covering in this lecture so as i told that uh, chinese medicine sees the working of the body and mind as a result of the interaction of the certain vital substances and these could be material substances also like essence or in fact your body itself is the manifestation of chi or in a non material form like mind the body and mind are nothing but the forms of chi all the other vital substances are but manifestations of chi in various varying degrees of materiality ranging from the completely material such as body fluid to totally immaterial such as mind so these are the basic vital substances and we'll be taking one by one so in chinese uh, the concept of uh, chi is as i have already explained you in a nutshell that chi is something it could be material and it could be immaterial so that's why we are able to treat the diseases related to mind and not only brain okay so there is difference between mind and brain so suppose if a patient comes to you having very severe insomnia okay he has been taking uh, pills quite a some time so what kind of complaint he will have doctor sahab i am uh, i don't have to sleep and uh, even i take uh, two pills in the night till my mind is not sleeping so what the modern medicine does for the allopathic approach is they try to uh, sedate your brain 
they they try to sedate your physical brain but they cannot work on the mind but on the contrary our treatment can also work on brain and mind both and that's why after giving some acupuncture session the patient gets relief and the mind doesn't wander so as the chi has various kinds of functions and variety of uh, uh, various roles it has to play so it's really very difficult to translate chi but uh, it's it's the versatile nature whereby chi can assume different manifestation and uh, be different things in different situations so chi is the basis of all phenomena in the universe and provides the continuity between the coarse material form and tenuous verified and non material energy so again this is a, a very good example to show the a live body is the condensation of chi and a dead body is the dispersion of chi okay so there is not not much difference between a, a dead man and a live man the only difference is the presence of chi if the chi is not there the body is gone the body remains the same it's, it's only the difference between the chi the energy okay after that after that what happens uh the body goes back to the nature okay the deep the de uh, decay starts the chi is gone back to its own its story is back to the god it and now excuse me doctor yeah will you please sit nearer to the mic it is not that much clear some distortion uh, some something is coming okay okay let me let me change the mic just a minute okay okay is that uh now is it fine i feel so doctor okay, okay. i'll i'll continue then now it's okay then okay okay yeah okay so so death is the dispersion of chi and life is the aggregation of chi so we'll be moving for okay so the concept of chi in chinese medicine is just as chi is the material substratum of the universe it is also the material and mental spiritual substratum of human life i have explained this so the two aspects of chi are especially relevant to medicine are the chi is a constant state of flux and in varying states of aggregation when condensed chi give rise to physical shape when dispersed chi chi give rise to subtle forms of energy so i have already explained when the chi condense it give rise to uh, physical forms of manifestations are there your body itself is is made up of chi and when it uh, disperses so again the the lightest the rarefied form of chi is mind so there is a big contrast between your body and mind but uh, it's very interesting to know that anything which starts it starts from your mind itself suppose you want to go to delhi so you can not go to delhi unless until a thought comes to your mind so mind is that's why is a very pull very powerful source of uh, energy and without unless until you a thought comes strikes to your mind you will you won't take the decision to go to delhi that will be a uh, uh, the, the next step that whatever you want to do unless until comes to your mind so mind is again a very powerful so all the kind of meditation and all those things uh they are all doing the things in your uh, mind so chi is an energy the, the second concept is the chi is energy which manifest simultaneously on the physical and emotional and spiritual level so every every level the only the the, the density of the chi changes 
and uh, whether it's emotional mental or spiritual or physical only the chi changes the, the density of chi the aggregation of chi changes and everything is chi itself so there are many types ty different types of uh, chi affecting our body and uh, mind ranging from subtle and very fine to very intense and coarse all the various types of chi however are ultimately one chi merely manifesting in different forms although chi remains fundamentally the same it puts on different hat yes this is a very important point that uh, chi is always the same it's the same thing but it's uh, the function and the place which uh, which which takes uh, it's different from due to its different function okay so suppose uh, we know you must be aware of defensive chi if not then i'll be i'll be covering this topic today itself so if you are aware of it so defensive chi is is, is the same chi present in your body but it's doing some uh, a totally different function and a totally different uh, it's like a specified uh, product is made for a particular function okay so the various states of aggregation of chi also account for its uh, manifestation at physical emotional and mental okay so again the, the the there are two meanings of chi one is uh, the energy produced by the internal organs okay so energy produced by the internal organs is also chi and the uh, energy required to function uh, function for an organ okay to to perform a function for an organ is also chi like liver chi or lung chi so both are known as chi but the form and the role are different so to both of them we 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 designate them as chi so starting with the very first and very important uh, is the essence now essence as the name implies the essence is the very a uh, pure very dense part of anything uh, and it it has it has all the qualities of that particular thing in a very uh, small quantity as well for example uh, you must be aware of the fact that perfume is is made by uh, making the essence from the essence of uh, Uh, the distillation is being done and it's very concentrated form and then it is being diluted into perfumes so essence a small drop of it a micro drop of the rose perfume and you will come to know about it due to its fragrance because it contains the the all the properties of that particular uh, thing so essence similarly in our body is is uh, is like a is a unique code to our body so here essence uh, in in modern medicine we can take it as uh, the genetic code the dna the rna is this is this you can uh, understand uh, that essence is somewhat linked to this dna and rna the genetic code which is uh, there <laughs> so this is very important that uh, this the, the fact you must the, the, there is a fact that uh, essence must be preserved okay and according to acupuncture uh, as long as you have the essence in your body uh, you have the, the more you have a longer life if the essence is finished you are dead so essence is something which needs to be preserved and uh, it's it's a very tedious process in the body in the body also and in uh, uh, there are there is a very long process of formation of essence it, it takes time so the the most important uh, it's a it's a one of the very very important part in your body and uh, unfortunately in uh, in modern medicine we don't give uh, much importance to this part so in men it is basically the semen and in female uh, it's uh, the ovum so it's something which needs to be uh, conserved and it's it's very very uh, uh, full of energy and uh, very important part so we'll be covering uh, further so according to acupuncture there are uh, three types of essence there is pre heaven post heaven 
and uh, kidney essence as well. Okay, so we'll be starting with three heaven essence. So at the conception, so when uh, when the sperm and the, the ova unites, so that is what forms when they you, then, when they unite uh, and they they form a fetus or uh, the fertilization happens. So that itself is the pre heaven essence. Okay, so what happens is it's is just similar to something like a chemical reaction. See, you have two different uh, chemicals, like one is from the other is over, and a chemical reaction happened, and a third product is formed. So, some somewhat that kind of reaction happens. It's a very crude way to explain, but this is a very simple way to explain. So, it is. Uh, how what, what I want to uh, share is that this three heaven essence is responsible for the development of the embryo along with the kidney essence of the mother. Uh, how to relate it? Okay, medically, if you want to understand, see, kidney essence of the mother is definitely there because mother is nurturing the uh, the baby. So that is understood. So, what about the pre heaven essence? So, pre heaven essence, you can understand that uh, as soon as they, uh, the fertilization happens, it's a single cell body, and within uh, 72 hours, it, it it gets divided and divided and multiplies. It's, it's multiplies and it forms uh, a, a blastocyst stage. Is there a, 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 a ball of? cells is being is formed and which gets implanted to the uterus so this energy of uh, multiplication or how to multiply properly or uh, the process which is occurring at the very initial stages uh, this is what i think is due to pre heaven essence and this essence nourishes the embryo and fetus during the pregnancy and also dependent on the nourishment derived yes so embryo takes the nourishment from the pre-heaven essence and the essence of mother the pre-heaven essence is the only kind of essence present in the fetus and after the birth it does not have any uh, significance okay it's, it's, its role is to just nourish the embryo and take care of it this is uh, this three heaven essence is what determines each person's basic constitution, makeup, strength, and vitality. And uh, that is why all the genetic diseases, if they are happening, or the hereditary diseases, uh, or by birth defects are there, something the genetic defects are there, they are happening at this uh, three heaven uh, essence itself because they are being derived from the mother and the father. So pre-heaven essence is closely linked to the fire of gate of life. So on the contrary, see pre-heaven essence is the yin part of the essence and the fire of gate of life is the yang part of essence. So let me, let me uh, uh, try to explain what is, how, what is fire of gate of life doing here. So as I told <clears throat> that as soon as the fertilization happens and the cell divides, so this division or increase in number is a young activity, okay? And uh, this is a this is a physiologic process where you need some kind of energy, okay? You need raw material. Definitely, you need some raw material. So that raw material is the pre heaven essence provided by the pre heaven essence. But the division to happen requires some young energy. So that is provided by the fire of gate of life. And it is already present from the birth, indeed from conception. So again, yin and yang is, is they are inseparable and they are always present everywhere around you. You cannot separate them. And one cannot live without the other. So the material basis is provided by the pre-heaven essence. And the division which occurs and the growth of the growth again is young. So growth of the fetus, uh, uh, what happens is 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 uh, is by the fire of gate of life. And this is a very good, beautiful diagram and this will explain a lot of things. 
So yang essence of the father, that is sperm, and the yin essence of the mother, uh, that is over. They they uh, they unite, and uh, conception of the uh, essence uh, happens, and the fetus is formed, and then there is a, a division going on, and the childbirth happens, and at the puberty, uh, this this uh, essence matures at the time of puberty into kidney essence and through this essence again uh, it will in, a, in in case of males it will give rise to uh, uh, sperm and in females it give rise to menstrual cycle and all those things so pre evanescence is also present from uh, conception and birth but it is it then matures into kidney essence at puberty when it generates menstrual birth uh, and ovine women sperm and the fire gate of life can be said to represent the young aspect of the pre essence while the pre essence proper, yes, I have already covered that part. <clears throat> so the fire of gate of life accumulates at BU4 and uh, this uh, pre essence accumulates at CV4. So if you want to uh, increase the young, the young of your body, or uh, if you just fire up the fire of gate of life, you just need to do some oxide BU4. And in order to uh, just um, uh, improve your essence, you need to have some moxa at CV4 because at, that is the point where they, they get, uh, gets accumulated. So this uh, correlation with the uterus in the woman, and uh, it is definitely correlated with both. And due to its interaction with the post heaven essence, it can be positively <coughs> stimulated. Okay. So the best way to affect positively uh, one's pre heaven essence is by striving for balance in one's life. Yes. So how this is uh, this is by balance between work and rest, restraint in sexual activity because uh, the sexual uh, excess of sexual activity will drain out the essence and and weaken the kidneys. And a balanced diet. Why balanced diet? Because a balanced diet uh, will uh, fuel up the post heaven essence will be covering that topic as well. So balance, the balanced diet will be fueling the post heaven essence and uh, uh, the, uh, the there should be balance between work and rest. Why? Suppose if you are doing overwork, so what happens? Your uh, the post heaven essence uh, part is being consumed and uh, like, like you have seen those scooters now where earlier we used to have uh, scooters and where we have some reserve knob available. So when 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 the scooter the, the petrol gets so low, so it gets into reserve knob so that you can go and uh, you have uh, you have an alarm that it's time to refuel your uh, scooter. Okay. So so what happens? It the same thing happens in our body as well. So when we do overwork, so the post heaven uh, the post heaven part it gets consumed. And after it gets consumed, the essence is consuming up. So those people who are doing overwork are ultimately decaying their essence. Okay. So that will further lead to various kinds of diseases and ultimately uh, a lot of problems. So any irregularity or excess in these spheres is bound to diminish pre heaven essence. So any a direct way to influence one's essence positively is through breathing exercise. And that's why uh, meditation and uh, this breathing exercise, yoga, pranayama is considered to be very beneficial. <coughs> so post heaven essence. Now we talked about the pre heaven. Now post heaven essence. So post heaven essence is nothing, the but the energy which uh, we get after eating food. Okay, so here the stomach and spleen has a major part to play. Definitely lungs and heart as well, but the major part is there with stomach and spleen. So this post heaven essence and uh, this post heaven essence, uh, what it does is, is, is the energy which you get from the food itself. So if you are not eating the food, your, uh, your post heaven essence will, uh, will, will diminish. And afterwards, it will diminish your kidney essence because post heaven essence gets converted into kidney essence when in excess. Otherwise, 
those having very uh, very weak stomach and spleen a poor digestion they are unable to create that much of post heaven essence uh, sorry uh, yeah post heaven essence and which leads to in a longer run they'll uh, they'll be consuming up their kidney essence and uh, which will lead to death in uh, in a short span of time so that is why what we need is a balanced diet so that we can always uh, uh, keep the tank full of the post heaven essence so as stomach and spleen are responsible for the digestion of food and transformation and transportation of food essences ultimately leading to production of chi so the post heaven essence is closely related to stomach and spleen it indicates the essence produced by stomach and spleen after birth as opposed to pre heaven essence which is formed before birth so let me tell you that pre heaven uh, the post heaven essence gets converted to kidney essence and not to pre heaven essence okay it has role only in your uh, uh, as far as the fetal developmental uh, development is concerned after birth it's the kidney essence which will take care and uh, through food you are getting energy and the reserve energy is more or less like kidney essence so for this reason stomach and spleen are known as a root of post heaven essence and kidney as the root of pre heaven essence so what is kidney essence so again it derives from the pre heaven essence and the post heaven essence so like pre heaven essence it is the hereditary energy which determines the person's constitution and like the pre heaven essence our uh, uh, kidney essence interacts with the post heaven I, i told you this that it interacts with the post heaven essence and is replenished by it so this is essence is stored in kidneys but it also circulates all over the body so what is the difference between uh, the essence and chi that chi is uh, formed after birth and it can be replenished from day to day basis and the cycles are very short uh, and they they move very quickly because it's a rarefied form of essence of chi okay compared to essence essence is a very dense form of chi and chi itself is a comparatively rarefied form of chi so essence takes longer time it has longer cycles like 7 to 8 years so 7 years in case of uh, females and 8 years in case of males so they they have longer cycles and essence takes more time to get re- replenished and uh, but essence is present present before the birth so this is the and, and and you have now an idea that chi is the major role to play essence definitely is more uh, uh, more important but it is the chi which is going to be uh, more important in day to day life okay for the normal physiologic process to happen chi has the major role so the function of essence are that uh, like genetic material okay uh, like genetic material they are all they have all of uh, your uh, the, the, the coding is there the dna the rna they have all the information about you how you will look how you will speak how you will talk and a uh, lot of things how will be your memory so you can clearly see the same kind of functions are written the growth reproduction and development okay the the marrow the marrow here in acupuncture is, is different the constitutional strength so it is somewhat similar so as far as the growth reproduction is concerned so essence is very very important for uh, the growth and reproduction so those having the uh, you must have seen the cases of cerebral palsy uh, the the essence somewhere is lacking the the, the child from the birth itself is having some issues so that is somewhere the problem with the essence so in ch- in children it's it it controls the growth of bones teeth again you can see the bones teeth hair normal brain development and sexual maturation these are all controlled by kidney this is the kidney energy you must be aware of it and uh, and that is why kid- because kidney stores the essence so it, it has all the uh, the characteristics so after puberty it controls the reproductive function 
and fertility it forms the basis for successful conception and pregnancy so definitely you need to have a, a very strong essence is required a strong sperm or a or a vital ovas ovums are required for a successful pregnancy and we see a lot of cases these days uh, uh, of infertility so that is not basically due to essence but uh, those kind of patients you will see having the problem uh, from the very beginning itself having uh, a weakened essence uh, those you can those will have a very typical kind of uh, symptoms like uh, they'll have the bone pain and some teeth issues and uh, the, the periods from the very beginning will be very much disturbed very less or amenorrhea uh, kind of situation will be there so the natural decline of the essence during our lifetime leads to the natural decline of sexual energy and fertility so these are all linked to uh, the same the aging itself is a process of decline of essence yeah as as your age uh, uh, increases the aging is there so the essence is going to decline the men essence follows uh, flows in 8 year cycles and women essence in 7 years <clears throat> so what is the, the significance is that after every 8 and after every 7 years uh, there is some change in uh, the body because of the change in essence so that is another big topic i'll be covering it later so essence is a business, uh, basis of kidney chi so as i told you uh, it is a the essence is a very dense form of uh, of chi so what happens is in order for essence to perform its function it gets converted into chi okay so that is known as yuan chi okay the original chi essence in liquid form condensed form is essence but in in a rarefied form or in chi form is original chi so original chi further give rise to kidney chi okay and that is how the essence is the basis of kidney chi so essence is fluid like and naturally has a affinity with yin it can therefore be considered as an aspect of kidney yin it provides the material basis for kidney yin to produce kidney chi by heating action of so as in diagram you can see so kidney yang is the fire required to uh, to heat up the essence and make into a rarefied form that is kidney chi so now marrow in uh, essence produce marrow so marrow in the uh, bone marrow the bone marrow in uh, it's it's not bone marrow it's marrow a marrow in chinese or in acupuncture has a totally different uh role because it's it's also con constitutes bone marrow part but it also constitutes the part in your uh, which which fills the brain and the spinal cord so in case now the, as i uh, the, the case of cerebral palsy what happens is because there is a deficiency of essence there is a stunted growth okay there is a mental retardation in these children only and only because the marrow is also deficient due to deficiency of the essence so what we need to do is we all need to try to increase That, that that will be a root uh, root cause treatment okay we need to increase the essence somehow along with doing all kind of acupuncture stuff on uh, on the brain itself okay so thus marrow is a substance which is common matrix of bone marrow brain and spinal cord and it has no equivalent in western medicine so it's totally an acupuncture concept there is no concept in uh, modern medicine so this thus if if kidney essence is weak the brain may lack nourishment and the person may lack concentration and memory and suffer from dizziness and a feeling of emptiness of head so essence as a basis of constitutional strength so basic constitution is decided by what kind of person would you be 
how much defensive chi will be there and how what kind of immunity we will, will have how strong will be your muscle how what will be your looks everything is being told by is stored in uh, essence and it is determined by essence so essence determines our basic constitutional strength and resistance to exterior pathogenic factor so exterior pathogenic factor means the 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 resistance the immunity it is also the immunity is being also so you must have seen those kind of uh, uh, patients uh, which are uh, very weak from from the beginning itself uh, uh, from the beginning they have uh, they are very prone to cold and flus and very frequently so that could be a case where there there, there is uh, some uh, there is some deficiency of essence it could be so we we need to uh, figure out that factor as well not only lungs we have to consider we have to consider kidneys as well but definitely lungs are the primary ones which we need to look at although the defensive chi is mostly responsible for protection from exterior pathogenic factor it also draws its strength and has roots in the kidney essence so from these four main functions of essence one may deduce a kind of problem that may derive from the essence deficiency of essence so yes I, as i told you there if there is a deficiency of essence so there will be deficiency some problem with the growth reproduction and development in the child like it there could be a uh, infertility there could be stunted bone growth there could be poor bone development uh, osteogenesis imperfect because so these are some medical uh, uh, terms uh, bone development is very weak there are various uh, kind of bone diseases so they and they come from the deficiency of essence unfortunately there is no treatment uh, in modern medicine and such diseases can be we can we can manage them better than uh, better than the modern medicine okay uh, but but it's difficult to cure Cure is not the right uh, word, I think. Uh, a better management we can we can uh, we can do in acupuncture. Infertility, habitual miscarriage, mental retardation uh, in children, bone deterioration in adults, loose teeth and hair falling out or graying prematurely. So these are all the symptoms of weak essence. Again, if uh, the essence as the basis of kidney and that goes uh, weak. And that part of the essence goes weak so there will be poor sexual function importance the knees will be weakened all the organs and all the uh, functions of kidney will be weakened and uh, nocturnal emissions tinnitus deafness then if the marrow is poor then there will be poor concentration poor memory i have already explained as far as the the basic the constitutional strength is concerned uh, the patient will be prone to colds, influenza, allergic uh, rhinitis and such kind of diseases. So essence is the basis of three treasures. So what are the three treasures? The three treasures are the, the mind, chi and the essence. These are the three treasures in our body and all are the form, some or the other forms of chi as I explained earlier. Then the chi, uh, the essence is, as I explained, that essence get converted into chi, and essence can also convert it into mind. Okay, and that is how that marrow is being produced, uh, and it, it's it's uh, nourishing the brain, the marrow. The, the essence is nourishing the brain. So, so essence is ultimately the whole thing in your body whether it's mind whether it's uh, the chi of any organ okay so the essence chi and mind are the three fundamental physic physical and psychic substance of a human being so for this reason they are known as three treasures so essence chi and mind are also rep also represent three different states of condensation of chi essence being the densest chi being more rarefied and mind being the most subtle and immaterial so in case of uh, 
na psychological diseases or mental diseases we have to see whether it's coming whether it's something due to qi stagnation whether it's due to deficiency of qi or whether it's due to deficiency of essence as well we have to figure out accordingly according to the symptoms so if the essence and qi are healthy and flourishing the mind will be happy and this will lead to healthy and happy life so a patient is coming to me and uh, he is having fibromyalgia but uh, the kind of symptoms he has ultimately i figured out i tried to improve his uh, essence i figured out that it's due to essence so when when uh, earlier at the at the beginning when he came to me he was very dull very uh, hopeless kind of uh, very depressed he was in a very depressed phase, uh, state as uh, as the treatment progressed as the essence because essence to increase takes time as it improved so i could clearly see there is a there was a big difference in his psychological the mental attitude as well he now uh, fortunately has got uh, uh, because his mental state has also and the physical state has improved so now he is able to do his job uh, he's, he has resumed the job so th- these kind of things these symptoms you can i, I was able uh, i was clearly able to see in this patient so as you increase the essence the the patient uh, the patient will improve the patient improve i'm not saying in all the cases because you have to find the root cause what is the, what is the basis of the problem so thus a healthy mind depends on the strength of essence which is stored in kidneys and chi which is produced by stomach and spleen in other words mind is dependent on pre heaven and post heaven essence not only mind i'll say everything i mean the whole body and mind and everything it depends on the balance between the pre heaven and the post heaven essence there is a short uh, chart to so just uh, okay in practice essence gives an indication of inherited constitution chi gives an indication of the state of chi produced from day to day and mind gives an indication of state of emotional and mental life so essence as i told is a genetic constitution chi is like from on daily basis uh, most more or less uh, post heaven chi from spleen and stomach and mind will give you what is happening in your emotional and mental life so the state of the essence can to some degree be deduced from patient's past a history of serious childhood diseases would indicate a weak constitution so this this the history taking again is a very is an art and you should know how to approach a patient for a particular uh, some patients are they, they don't tell you anything some i have some kind of patients they don't tell you anything they'll say everything is fine but you have to find it out they'll not they'll not even say yes to any kind of symptom they are having because they are so lost the mind is somewhere else totally so mind is the root cause of the problem in such patients even if they are having some kind of physical symptoms so i i particularly i i uh, i uh, treat the mind in these cases so it can also be observed in pulse a pulse and that is how we we need to find out the tongue diagnosis the pulse diagnosis a pulse with a scattered or a leather quality indicates a poor and a weakened essence and the tongue can show a weakened essence if it has if its root has no spirit a, a dead looking tongue okay someone takes out the tongue lifeless kind of tongue is a tongue with a no spirit uh, having a weakened essence so this is how i approach to that fibromyalgic patient the state of mind can be deduced by observing the luster of eyes so a bright shining eyes will indicate you uh, that a good amount of chi is coming to the eyes and brain and uh, a poor luster a uh, very uh, very weak, weak kind of eyes looking uh, they are they are having a you can deduce that the mind is not properly nourished so eyes with a luster that is with a certain undefinable shine and vitality about them show a healthy condition of mind eyes that look dull as if their 
as they have a certain uh, curtain of mist in front of them show that mind is disturbed so eyes are the uh, eyes through eyes you can uh, you can make your diagnosis i i made that diagnosis in fibromyalgia fibromyalgia patient and through this way itself just by looking at the tongue and the eyes so this is a, this can frequently be observed in those who have had serious emotional problems for a long period of time or have a serious shock even if uh, this occurred many years previously so all the psychological case you have to figure out all the mental or the depression case uh, schizophrenia depression stress anxiety those you have to check the eyes i'm not saying only only eyes but eyes give you a very good idea what what's happening in your in the mind not even in the patient with the the depression also a uh, generally you can figure it out uh, if you if you want to just have an idea what what's happening uh, what's the state of a person so after the essence now we have come to chi now chi has a uh, various forms of chi is uh, chi are there the chi is originally the same it's the function which is uh, uh, which is different and we name them now uh, it's 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 similar to similar to the uh, I, let me give an example see the army or the the, the defensive forces remains the same so if it goes to the border it becomes border security force if it it is inside uh, it is police or uh, some other force so it's and they have a different kind of training different kind of functions so similarly chi if it is at the exterior it has it is known as uh, defensive chi it will take care of uh, the immunity but uh, if it is inside the body it is uh, uh, nourishing the body it's known as nutritive chi so different function different place a different name but ultimately the chi is the same so first we'll covering the original chi so as i told essence is a very dense part of chi and for it to work on a daily basis it's need to get into a subtler form so original chi is nothing but the essence in the form of chi okay so it is a dynamic and rarefied form of essence having its origin in the kidneys the original chi is often said to include the original yin and original yang and this means that the original chi is the foundation of all the yin and yang energies of the body so all the because essence uh, give rise to uh, the yin and the yang energies in the body and that is why the kidneys are the kidneys hold the essence and that is why kidneys are considered to be the uh, ori uh, uh, origin of the original yin and origin yang so original chi like essence relies on the nourishment from the post heaven essence the so post heaven essence that is the energy from the food you take okay so that again gets converted to essence and uh, essence again converted into original chi and original chi is responsible for all the kind of functions in your body at different places so original chi has many functions and will be covering them one by one so as the first is it is a motive force it is the dynamic force that arouses and moves the functional activity of all the organs so all the organs because why they are working they are working because of the original chi okay anything which is working in the body is due to original chi because it is a functional form of essence so it is the foundation of vitality and stamina as a form of chi it circulates all over the body in the channels it could also be said to link between essence and chi because chi uh, you must have understood by this time a basis of kidney chi as i have told you that this original chi is very related to all the uh, function of kidney now if you go to kidney it becomes kidney chi if you go to liver it becomes liver chi and will be performing that different function so original chi is closely related to gate of life and share it role uh, of 
providing the heat uh, necessary to all the body functional activity so again original chi is the basic thing the essence converted into chi and now you have a gate of life which will be fueling uh, which will be like uh, na, providing all kind of energy to all the physiological processes happening in your body all the enzymatic reaction all the hormonal and various kind of enzymatic reactions that is all done controlled by fire of gate of life so now it facilitates the transformation of chi so as we see uh, we will see later that the original chi acts as an agent of change in the transformation of gathering chi into true chi so we'll be uh, covering this topic today itself so gathering chi is the chi in the chest okay okay and it gets converted into true chi so i'll i'll be covering this part don't worry so this is one way in which the kidneys participate in the production of chi so through 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 original chi the kidneys participate so original chi has a very very important function uh of transformation of chi because it assist the other chi is also like gathering chi to get transformed into the other forms of chi so it act as a catalyst here okay so it is a conduit for the triple burner so triple burner what happens is all the energy so when the fire of gate of life burns okay it heats up the essence the the, the original chi moves up from the point du4 okay so it is the triple warmer it act as a pipeline so through the through the triple warmer it ascends and spreads all over the body and all over the channels and the places where uh, where the original chi uh, appears in the channel is the yuan source point that is the source point okay you must be aware of the yuan source point so that is the point uh, where we can uh, we can utilize the original chi the yuan source point okay so triple burner here acts as a pipeline and it takes the original chi to the various parts of the body so triple burner plays a very important role of allowing the original chi to facilitate the transformation of chi in different places around the body and assume different forms of forms in each place okay to facilitate the transformation of blood so again uh, original chi also facilitates the transformation of food chain to blood i know this is a bit getting a bit theoretical but uh, this will be covered in the coming lectures so don't worry so blood is also uh, again i as i told you that original chi acts as a catalyst over here so it has a i'll i'll be ex i'll be explaining the medical part of it uh this is one way in which the kidneys participate in the production of blood so as we know that there is a, a, an hormone uh, produced from the uh, from the kidneys which is also responsible for the formation of blood and that is that is there through the, uh, in the medical modern medicine so an acupuncture also we know that kidneys are responsible for the production of blood so in this in this uh, diagram you can chart you can see that there is kidney yin this kidney yang and this gate of life it heats up the chi goes to the internal organs to the 12 channels and they are appear at the source points now how to treat the original chi so needling you can needle the 12 source point of the 12 channels so needling or you can apply the moxide uh, cv7 but best is cv4 anything cv754 but best is cv4 if you can get just moxa or do some needling so needling and applying moxa at the four point okay so you can uh, you can uh, 
just uh, you know, stimulate the fire of fire of uh, gate of life. So the source point is okay. These are the source points for kidneys. If you want to stimulate, uh, it's K three. It's liver three for liver. It's heart seven for heart. SP three for lungs and lung nine. Uh, SP three for spleen and lung nine for lungs. So now we are coming to food chain. So from original chain, now we are going to food chain. So what is food chain? So from day to day basis, we are taking uh, we are taking energy from the food itself. You all you are all aware of it. So what happens in digestion? So when you have food, it gets so it gets. Uh, um, broken into smaller parts it gets refined it's a suppose you are having uh, you are eating some carbohydrates okay you are having some fruit or eating some chocolate so that is all carbohydrate i'm just taking an example of carbohydrate so carbohydrate is a very complex uh, form uh, for body to uh, to gain some energy from it so for that you need to Break it into the smaller parts. That is, the smallest one is glucose, fructose, and so on, dextrose, and so on. So glucose is being the 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 easiest form uh, from from where the body uh, can uh, take the energy out of it. So ultimate aim of carbohydrate it is to get break broken down into glucose. Ultimate aim of protein is to get break down into amino acids so that body can absorb it and take energy from it. So, if this digestion is improper, then the body won't be able to take the energy out of it. Even if you are spending thousands of rupees on the multivitamins or the 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 most ex expensive fruits if you are having but if your machine itself is not able to extract that energy out of it then it's of no use okay getting my point so spleen and stomach these both are responsible for extracting that energy from the food and converting that energy into well, converting the food into energy form and that is food chi this is what food chi is and this is what ultimately the uh, post heaven essence will be okay so from middle part the food chi also rises so what happens after the digestion happened this is very interesting and very important just Just listen to it very carefully. What happens is, from the stomach and spleen, after the food has got converted into food, chi, the energy form, it goes to the chest. So chest has two organs, lungs and heart, and both uh, and at both the places the food chi will be going. So first, it is a uh, it is if it goes to the heart it becomes blood if it goes to the lungs it becomes the food chi becomes gathering chi okay and i'll be explaining the medical part of it as well and how you see the, the how the modern medicine see this so this transformation is helped by kidney chi and original chi i'll tell you what original chi is doing so food chi is produced by spleen which has the very important function of transforming and transporting the various hmm, uh, various products extracted from food so we are eating food and it is being converted into energy so if it is converted into energy efficiently that is your spleen and stomach are strong so the food chi produced will be good so if this first step itself is not good then there is no point of moving further ahead no matter how costly you are how much costly fruits are you eating if your machine if your spleen are weak you are not get going to get energy out of it okay 
okay so that's why acupuncture has such an important role to play it's not only uh, you take uh, the multivitamins or you take some two supplements you have to equivalently take care of your stomach and spleen as well so in doing so spleen has to send and this is a very important function so spleen has to send the food energy up to the chest okay and this is why the spleen energy ascends it goes up in cases of spleen chi deficiency if the spleen energy is weak spleen won't be able to uh, push that energy to the chest so the energy will be going down in those cases the the patient will be having the symptoms of loose stools okay the people with having semi stools or loose stools not loose stools i'll say semi stools and having lethargy they are having a weak spleen and stomach they need to tonify them so this is the this is the diagram and you can see clearly on your left you can see that spleen leads to the production of food chi and then it goes to lungs where food chi combines with the air from the lungs and give rise to gathering chi on the right you can see this spleen give rise to food chi it goes to the lungs and then to the heart and the heart and in the heart it gets converted into blood okay in the presence of original chi where original chi acts as a catalyst so this is the course and as you know that food chi is a very coarse form of chi and body cannot utilize it and it therefore is the basis for the transformation into more refined form as i told you that carbohydrate is a very complex form and body needs the refined form or a very small uh, simplified form of sugar in order to get in order to absorb it efficiently okay body cannot uh, directly take uh, the carbohydrates so they, they need to they are very complex structures chemically so body needs a very small unit like glucose is a very small unit the body can utilize glucose as a fuel and in the presence of oxygen it burn it up and the atp is are produced atp is the unit of energy okay medically that is the unit of energy with this process is happening in each and every cell i'll be coming to that so to to tonify the food chi we 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 tonify st36 and cv12 you can also moxa over these points and it gives very good very very good results and very amazing results so now we are coming to gathering chi so till now we have seen the stomach and spleen both have a uh, are able to form a uh, those uh, uh, the food chi but food chi is a very coarse form the body wants it to be in a more refined form in order to take out the energy so now it goes to the lungs the lungs has what what it what is the function it, it, it helps in respiration so how the respiration is happening is it takes the air in the oxygen in ultimately you need oxygen okay so it combines with the air and gives rise to gathering chi so gathering chi is produced in in the chest and this is very very beneficial for the lungs and the heart both because it assist in the circulation all the circulation over the body okay the blood flow improves due to gathering chi and that is what we are improving while doing the pranayam the no vilom and all those kinds of uh, pranayams they are all uh, they improve the circulation throughout the body and we are we are we are stimulating the gathering chi there so gathering chi is a most subtle form and refined form of chi then food chi and is usable by the body so here you can see so this is the medical part of it okay this is this is the pick of aerobic respiration now what is this a 
I, I know it's being complicated for you. So let me simplify it. Aerobic means, uh, aerobic respiration means the respiration happening in presence of oxygen. Okay. And anaerobic uh, respiration is the respiration happening in absence of oxygen. So there are two types of respiration, but what we need is aerobic respiration because in aerobic respiration, 38 ATPs, ATP is, I told you, is the unit of energy which is produced. So 38 ATPs are produced, but in anaerobic respiration, only two ATPs are produced. So this is happening in all the cells. Why we need to break down the energy, why we need to use the rarefied form of energy is as we need glucose, as you can see in the process of glycolysis, where it is get converted into pyruvic acid. I'm not get, going into detail. Okay. So ultimately what's happening is a complex carbohydrate gets into a simplified form that is glucose. And that glucose is utilized to produce energy in the presence of oxygen. So if there is a presence of oxygen, so from where the oxygen came is, it's the same oxygen, the air in the gathering chain. So it's not only in burning the glucose and producing the energy, but the gathering chi has more wider aspect. As See, uh, a blood, the RBC takes, okay, the RBC carries oxygen with it. You all are aware of it. So the more number of RBCs and normal amount of RBCs are there, they are carrying a good amount of oxygen to your body and you will be feeling energetic. So RBCs are carrying oxygen with them. So, and in according to acupuncture, a, a moving blood is known as blood. Okay. A blood which is moving is a live blood. So why it is moving and how it is moving, it is only and only due to chi present in it. So here chi you can understand it's the oxygen which is present. Okay. If there is no oxygen in the in the blood, it will be deoxygenated blood. So which is which you can see in veins. So veins look green or bluish. They don't look red. The only reason is they are deoxygenated. The blood moves comparatively at a slower rate in them. So I'm trying to uh, link both the aspects and make it very simple for you. So gathering chi, you can also take in this way. See the air, if, if you are carrying some air balloon with you, okay, or some, 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 uh, if you want to make something lighter to flow, so you add some air to it. Okay. Like you can add some balloon to it. So it will become it, the, the way it becomes lighter to it. So similarly, if the oxygen, say, if, if the lungs take more amount of air and more amount of oxygen, so the blood becomes lighter. First of all, the blood becomes lighter and it's, it's, it becomes very uh, easy for heart to move the blood. And that is how gathering chi is helping the heart and the lungs. Okay. So if the blood moves properly, if the blood moves freely, so there will be no blood stasis. Okay. And uh, these days we see a lot of problems and a lot of chronic diseases are due to either phlegm or due to blood stasis. Okay. And so what we need is the blood should be keep, keep moving. It should keep moving. It should never uh, stop in blood stasis. What happens? The blood has stopped. So this is a very big problem. This leads to various kinds of tumors and lots of, lots of uh, diseases. So here I've, I've tried to explain to you. If you have any questions, just ask me later. Okay. I'll again explain it. So the main functions are nourishes heart and lungs, enhances and promotes the lung function of controlling chi and respiration and heart function of governing blood and blood vessels. Definitely it controls the speech and strength of voice. So any person with having poor circulation and poor voice, 
okay so those with a poor circulation you can understand that we need to improve is gathering chi and the weak voice also signifies a weak lung and a weak gathering chi so it assists the lung and heart in their functions of controlling chi and breathing and and blood and blood vessels respectively gathering chi assist the heart and lungs to push chi and blood to the limbs i have already explained how they do efficiently and especially to hand so if gathering chi is weak the limbs and limbs and especially the hands will be cold in practice one can gauge the state of gathering chi from the health of heart and lungs and from the circulation and voice a weak voice shows weakness of gathering chi and so does the poor circulation to the hands being the energy of chest gathering chi is also affected by emotional problems and this is a very very important and major cause of blood stresses i am telling you emotional problems first of all leads to chi stagnation and in long run they lead to blood stresses and emotional problems are and for one example i can tell you fibroids breast uh breast nodes breast lumps i am having a case of a breast lump okay and that I, uh, the, the patient didn't told me anything about her emotional issues but uh, when we when, when i took the symptoms and all those so it ultimately it was due to that the patient was very very much sensitive towards uh, towards the other people behavior how the people other people behave so that led to disturbed periods okay that led to disturbed periods the periods were delayed they gone less the quantity of periods gone less and over a period of times i think uh, around 2 years so it developed the 4 uh, cm node it's a big node we have 4 cm she has been coming to me from past 5 days and uh, she used to have a very very delayed period and and i'm very happy to tell you that that patient got uh, that the period started uh, at the very fourth day of my treatment and I'm very and she is very happy with that she is feeling very much relaxed after having periods so i'm very hopeful that uh, after a uh, month or two treatment the root will uh, will will resolve so this is how the things are happening and she was advised to go for surgery and let me tell you she is just 19 years old and surgery at this age is not i don't think it's a very good advice because something if we can treat without surgery i don't think surgery is a good option to go with it so and then the node and the, the, the best thing is the node is also started to get softened so emotional problems are very very big very big and the biggest problem these days so you should try to balance it out your emotional level okay so in case in these cases both front and pro, pro, uh, front positions of left and right that is the heart and lung pulses uh, are very weak and empty so gathering chi you can take out from there that it's going weak so gathering chi and urinal chi assist each other gathering chi flows downwards to the kidneys and original chi flows upward to it breathing so so you see there is a connection between lungs and heart and how there is a, they they uh, complement each other in the the cycle of respiration so just remember this so when while we uh, take the air in when when we inhale so that is that is that is carried out by the energy of kidneys the the when we inhale the energy goes to the lung energy goes to kidneys okay and kidney should be able to receive and hold it if they are unable to hold there will be shortness of breath while taking the breath in okay when we when we just expel the air out so now that is done by the lung chi that is that is done by the lung chi so this is another way to diagnose whether your kidneys are getting weakened or whether your there is a problem with your lungs so you can ask every time you can ask the patient 
So this is another aspect of the relationship of mutual assistance that exists between lung and kidneys. So to unify uh, gathering, she use CV17 or REN17 and lung9 because lung9 is the organ source point. And this is how you can tonify lungs. So the chest area where, where the gathering chi collects is also called C of G. Okay, the controlling point of C of G is CV17. And the gathering chi is also treated via heart and lung channels. And of course, by breathing exercise. And that is why pranayam is very, very, very important. Now, what is true chi? So gathering chi is now uh, transformed into true chi under the catalytic, catalytic action of uh, original chi. So, see, let's go to that. Uh, this, this, in this uh, diagram, uh, you can see there is a section of glycolysis. Okay. So, glycolysis is one step. Then, uh, the products get into mitochondria, which is one of the uh, organelles in the cell. And there are a lot of things are happening. Okay. There, there occurs the Krebs, Krebs cycles happens. And then there is then electron transport system. So this is what I believe that electron transport system. See, a lot of enzymatic reactions are happening there in the electron transport system. A lot of enzymes are uh, happening in, uh, are, are being used in the Krebs cycle. So if some enzyme is lacking, okay, so some enzyme is lacking. So that could be due to some deficiency in the essence. This is what how I look. So in order to do not uh, take the energy from the uh, glucose, the final is the electron transport system. So this is what uh, where the original chi comes. So if there is some lack of uh, enzymes from the birth, because these are these machineries, something you are getting from the essence itself. So that is where the, the enzyme part, all the chemical reaction part is taken care by uh, original chi. This is how the original chi is extinct. Okay. And now gathering chi, the oxygen is transformed into true chi. The ATP is being formed. Okay. So the true chi is the final stage in the process of refinement and transformation of chi. So it is what that circulates and nourishes the channels. And let me tell you, there are uh, two kinds of it, depending on their function. One, so the chi which nourishes the internal organs and the channels and the chi which you stimulate through the needle is the nutritive chi. Okay. And the other chi, which is much more rarefied and which exists at the outer portion, which uh, is responsible for the immunity is known as defensive chi. So they have both have different function. One is nourishing the internal organs and the body and the other is having a defensive kind of function. So this is a, a chart to understand how uh, the whole process is happening. So nutritive chi. Let's read it. So it is the it has the function of nourishing the internal organs and the whole body. Nourishing chi is closely related to blood and flows within the blood vessels as well, of course, in the channels. And this is the chi that is activated whenever you, you do needling, and this is the only chi which we activated. So this is now nutritive chi is the ATP which is being produced. Okay, we are using that energy. So nutritive chi is the ATP, the final energy which we have. Uh, generated after burning uh, the, the glucose in the presence of oxygen. So defensive chi, another form assumed by true chi, when compared with the nutritive chi, defensive chi is a sorry, I tell you the it's a coarser form of chi. So as it flows on the outer layers of the body, it is yang in relation to nutritive chi, yes, and which flows in the inner layer and the internal organs. So the main function of defensive chi is to protect the body from the attacks of exterior pathogenic factors such as wind, cold, humidity, dampness, and so on, dryness as well. 
So in addition, it warms and moistens, uh, moistens and uh, partially nourishes the skin and muscles. It adjusts the opening and closing of one. This is a very important function of the defensive chi because what happens in case uh, of uh, the cold and flus? So there are two kind of flus. I'm just giving you a, a short uh, idea, I'm not not going into much detail. That's a different topic. But what happens is why you feel some shivering uh, when when there is some uh, some cold is happened to your body uh, when there is cold. So why why you are feeling some shivering and why there is fever? It is because there is the interruption in the flow of the defensive chi because defensive chi has uh, the function of keeping us warm, keeping our exterior surface warm. So when the exterior pathogenic factor, whether it be wind or humidity or anything, it attacks the body, it uh, enters through the skin pores uh, and it, it occupies the space between the skin and the muscle and that is known as cowley space that is a big topic and not going into much detail so what happens ultimately is it flows it disturbs the flows of flow of defensive chi so the warming function stops and uh, you feel shivering and cold so that, that is how it regulates the body temperature. All the thermostat is, is being regulated. The body's thermostat is, is regulated by it. So it, it also adjusts the opening and closing of pores. So that is why we, we need to have some sweating. Why when there is, uh, when, 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 we, we, when we are uh, having some cold and flu. So the more we sweat, the better it is. Okay, but I'll not, I'm not going into much detail. I can explain you each and every point, but it will be a lengthy topic. So being uh, diffused under the skin, defensive chi comes under the control of lungs. Yes, it is controlled by lungs and lungs are the primary ones <clears throat> which are responsible for the strength of defensive chi. Okay. They are also defensive chi is also uh, affected by the strength of the postnatal chi, that is the chi produced by the stomach and spleen. So suppose if you don't eat much food, doesn't matter how strong are your lungs, you are going to feel weak and your immunity will go down. The third factor which affects your uh, defensive chi or the immunity is your genetic factor, that is the kidney essence. So if your kidney essence is weak, that is genetically your makeup is weak, so it will be difficult and you'll be prone to you'll be prone to colds and flus. So thus a weakness of lung chi may lead to weakness of defensive chi. This can make someone prone to frequent colds. Defensive chi circulates outside the channels in the skin and muscles, and these are called the exterior of the body or also the lung defensive chi portion. Lungs diffuse, uh, yeah, body fluids to the skin and muscles. So these fluid mix with the defensive chi so that a deficiency of defensive chi may cause spontaneous daytime sweating. And this is how uh, some people see, uh, you can see a few people, this, they are sweating uh, all the time. I have these patients with me, they, their hands are always wet. It, it clearly shows there is a, uh, there is a deficiency in lungs because lungs are not able to hold the body fluids. The, the, they are escaping through the sweat. And this ex also explains the rational, rational in promoting sweating when the body is invaded by exterior wind cold. And this is, that, that is all I, what I'm trying to explain you. So in such cases, wind invading wind cold obstruct the circulation of defensive chi in the skin and muscles, blocking the pores and impairing the diffusing action of lungs. So when the, the diffusing action of lungs is impaired, all the body fl fluids gets accumulated inside and you start feeling cough, you start feeling breathlessness and there is uh, the, the, the water coming out from the nose. And it is only because the diffusing function of lung is affected. <clears throat> By restoring the lungs diffusing function and promoting the sweating, the pores will be unblocked, the fluids comes out as sweat 
and mix with them. The wind cold is expelled and the patient <coughs> feels fine. There is no need of antibiotic in such cases. We need, we don't need, actually we don't need antibiotics in case of virus as well because virus is a different entity and bacteria is different entity. Antibiotics are used to kill the bacteria, not the viruses. And but uh, but but we but we but we used to take it. That is a, another uh, that is the different thing. But but it has no role. I don't. I never took any antibiotic in case of virus. Viral take their time. Body produce anti, anti uh, antibodies against uh, against the bacteria, and uh, body produce interferons against the viruses. So both are different things. It's a big topic. I'm just giving you a hint. So it is therefore said uh, that the defensive chi spreads in the upper burner, upper warmer. So defensive defensive chi also spreads in the middle and lower burner. I've already explained that middle burner is uh, is for uh, standing for uh, the post uh, post heaven chi and lower burner for essence. That is what I have written. The defensive chi originates also from the essence and original chi is also transformed as I have already explained this. So this is another reason why resistance to exterior pathogenic factors is determined by the strength not only of lung chi but also of kidney yang. A, a deficiency of defensive chi causes a weakening of body's defenses against exterior pathogenic factors and person will be prone to catching cold frequently. The person will always tend to feel <clears throat> easily quiet already discovered that. So this is an important part. So defensive chi circulates 50 times in 20 hours, 25 times during the day and 25 times during the night. <clears throat> and there is a process that it circula uh, circulates uh, on the exterior first and then comes to the interior channels. So it is very, uh, it is this very flow of defensive chi from the interior towards the exterior emerging at the inner corner of the eye that opens the eye and wakes up in the morning. Okay, this is one of the concept. So at night, defensive chi flows in the yin organ, first to the kidneys, then to the heart, lung, liver, spleen. I have not found any uh, clinical correlation to this. I'm not doing too much details. So tonify the defensive chi uses. Uh, we, we need to tonify the stomach 36 and lung 9. So this is what we were talking about, the circulation of defensive chi. Now the central chi, it is another name given to uh, the chi produced by stomach and spleen and uh, it's all the less, all the more the same thing. The upright chi is also, it is a general term to indicate various types of chi that have the function of protecting the body from the invasions by the exterior pathogenic factors. Although it is a defensive chi, I have explained to you this, uh, that it, a defensive chi is, is uh, being uh, one of the factors. Okay. So nutritive chi, you need to have good, good nutritive chi or a post, uh, post heaven chi should be good. Kidney essence also plays a very important role. So just the naming is there uh, to be very specific. So functions of chi will be covering tomorrow. Yes, if you have any questions, you can ask. Anybody would like to ask any question, you can ask right now by raising your hands. I will admit you. I'm not able to hear anything. Is anybody you cannot hear, doctor? Okay. Anyway, we will continue the class for two more days. Just to so I. Uh, uh, hello. Ma'am, please, if you if you can, are you speaking something? If yes. you can just uh, <laughs> speak something, I, I will come to know whether I am able to hear it or. Ah, uh, I told them as if they want to clarify anything, they can raise the hand, and I will admit. At that time, we told that you cannot uh, hear anything. 
so i thought that we can anyway we'll continue the session for two more days so they can ask their doubts in coming days is it okay could you hear yeah now i can hear and uh, now you can hear okay yeah 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 please ma'am uh, uh, anish ravindra please unmute yourself anish ravindra anish Rekha, Rekha Golani, please unmute yourself. Hello, sir. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello, sir. Ha, yeah, sir. Hindi me, Hindi me, बोल सकते हैं? बोलिए, बोलिए. Ha, a neutrality chain and defensive chain is a different or thing? Both are different. Both have different functions. Neutrality mm -hmm. chain is the chain which is nourishing the organs and the channels okay they are it yeah, is right. found in, inside the body okay it is the same chi okay when you needle someone or you put some bio magnet to anyone yeah. so it is the nutritive chi which is affected okay. on the contrary defensive chi has a function of immunity immunity of body is is defensive chi okay it flows outside on the outer part of the body not inside the body okay on a okay. uh, skin level yeah under the skin under the skin it flows kyunki hame koi bhi san jo jo bhi we need some army at the borders na koi bhi andar nahi ghusna chahiye na to koi bhi external attack hoga to aapko border pe rakhna padega na apna army को अपना बॉर्डर सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेस को सो वो स्किन के अंडर फ्लो करता है और स्किन के अंडर फ्लो करने के लिए इट्स हैव टू मूव वेरी स्विफ्टली ओके इट हैव टू मूव वेरी स्विफ्टली अदरवाइज क्या होगा धीरे धीरे अगर वो पूरा राउंड ले रहा होगा तो क्या होगा कि एक जगह पता लगा वो धीरे धीरे चल रहा है तो बाहर से कोई आदमी आ जाएगा हमारे देश के अंदर तो जो वहां पे जो सेना तैनात होनी चाहिए बॉर्डर पे वो बहुत तेजी से मूव करनी चाहिए स्विफ्टली मूव करनी चाहिए Okay, so that is why it is lighter. Yes. But in this way, nutrient chain to improve. For us, what we need to do, and what we need to do for the defensive chain to improve. Okay. Look, for nutrient chain to improve, for us, first of all, we need to post natal chain, or post heaven chain. That is, what you are eating. Yes. What you are eating. वो पहली बात तो मैं आपको एग्जांपल देता हूँ सपोज आई बी स्पीकिंग इन इंग्लिश नाउ बिकॉज इट विल बेनिफिट ऑल ऑफ सो सो लेट्स टेक एन एग्जांपल फॉर दिस हाउ टू इंप्रूव द न्यूट्रिटिव चीज सो सपोज यू आर गोइंग टू मेक अ प्रोडक्ट आई एम जस्ट गिविंग एक वेरी सिंपल एग्जाम्पल सपोज यू आर वॉन्ट टू मेक अ वेरी गुड प्रोडक्ट सो इन ऑर्डर टू मेक अ वेरी गुड प्रोडक्ट यू नीड टू बेसिक थिंग्स वन इज अ वेरी गुड रॉ मटीरियल that is the food you need to have a balanced diet this is the first requirement the other is you need to have a proper machine which can make a very good product out of a very good raw material okay yes. so that machine is your body itself so in order to make a very good nutritive chi you need to have a very good and strong food chi so food chi is a strong food chi depends on a strength of stomach and spleen along with a balanced diet along with a a a a, a very good lungs okay unless and until okay as i told unless and until the glucose okay you, you have a coarse carbohydrate it has gone into a smaller part that is glucose now you need to burn it up in order to burn it up you need oxygen so oxygen is taken from the lungs so if the lungs are weak not enough amount of oxygen is been taken by it and which will lead to the deficiency of oxygen which will lead to you have a good amount of glucose but you have a poor amount of oxygen so that will not burn and will not produce sufficient amount of atps okay 
that will not produce enough amount of nutritive chi so in order to have a nutritive good nutritive chi you need to have strong lungs and a strong stomach and spleen along with a balanced diet now nadia uh, sorry sadia sadia पोलिटिकली राइट देन ये but honestly it is only my as far as i myself is concerned see if in the in the second wave what have happened is i i don't think a single person is left who doesn't have uh, na experience of corona everyone has everyone has you cannot escape a virus first of all you cannot escape a virus with the help of mask i'm not saying you should not use it but that is a bottom line that you cannot escape virus okay so in the second wave what have happened is the people all the people i think are already have been exposed to it so those who have ex- been exposed to it and you are live now okay you are not dead it it clearly means that your immunity has killed the virus and you have now enough immunity with you so that if the third wave will also come you already have some kind of uh, antibodies or interferons with you which will help you to fight with the third wave as well okay a vaccine does the same thing what a vaccine does is either you have a weakened virus or you have a dead virus it is being injected in your body and because it is a weak virus so that does not uh, harm you or it is a dead virus it cannot harm you but a body can have a uh, the production of antibodies and interferons for that so that if the real virus comes you already have some defensive system ready with you okay it is similarly to what an anti uh, missile is okay anti missile you have a missile coming to you you already have an anti missile for that you don't need to do anything some missile is coming automatically anti missile will disturb uh, that that will destroy that uh, that missile and you will be safe so vaccine is doing that that thing only so why i am not saying that you need uh, why i am why i am saying you you don't need it anymore because if you are you have been exposed earlier and you are live now it simply means that the immunity has already developed in your body you don't need to undergo any kind of vaccination it's only when you need to travel from one state to another you might need some uh, certificate to show at some airport i don't think because virus has a tendency to change it it, it, it will keep on mutating third wave fourth wave fifth wave so you cannot escape and how many vaccinations are you thinking you are going to have okay so for, for the third third wave you need to have another vaccine or, or fourth wave will come you will have another vaccine because virus will keep on changing that's it so if you are not exposed to virus i will suggest you can if you are already exposed to virus i don't think you need any 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 other because you are live and you already have uh, that much of immunity with you no so actually um, how to avoid or how to ignore it sir because we have to go out no sir yeah you have to go out you cannot avoid it the virus will enter your body that that's the bottom line you cannot avoid you mean you cannot escape from a virus it will catch you excuse me you we, are all, uh, we are all social uh, beings we are living living in the society so we have yeah. to obey some uh, government rules so yeah you uh, have to obey yes ask, yeah yeah so we sh- you should not ask uh, like uh, these questions in this platform uh, that's uh, all are the personal uh, thing okay you can decide if you want to take a vaccine oh. or not 
you yeah, know so all the things your now. personal it's your personal it's just the yeah. medical part i'm telling you but it's your yeah. personal choice yeah so should not ask some this, this questions in this platform okay this is a, a private and public group uh, so that's not good for us now the next person is uh, sarita agarwal namaste namaste तो जो शरीर में कहीं कहीं पे हड्डी पड़ जाती है तो वो क्या किडनी से रिलेटेड है और अगर रिलेटेड है तो वो क्या उसकी कमी से होती है ज्यादा से होते हैं या फिर उसको कैसे ठीक कर सकते हैं मैडम हड्डी क्यों बढ़ रही है अब हड्डी तो आर्थराइटिस में भी बढ़ती है ठीक है आर्थराइटिस में अगर नी की आर्थराइटिस का आप एक्सरे देखेंगे तो जो ज्वाइंट स्पेस है वहाँ पे हड्डी आ जाती वहाँ पे कुछ डिपोजिशन हो जाता है तो वो जो डिपोजिशन होता है वो हड्डी एक्चुअली होती नहीं है वो शरीर की गंदगी होती है ओके okay? और वहां पे वी नीड टू वी नीड टू डिटॉक्सीफाई आर बॉडी फर्स्ट तो डेफिनेटली वहां पे किडनी तो टोन करनी पड़ेगी साथ में लिवर पे भी काम करना पड़ेगा वी नीड टू टोनीफाई लिवर ऑल्सो बिकॉज लिवर और साथ में डाइट कंट्रोल डाइट रेगुलेशन आपको देखने पड़ेंगे डिटॉक्सीफिकेशन तो आपको कराना पड़ेगा हड्डी हड्डी अपने आप क्यों पड़ रही है वो हड्डी नहीं पड़ रही है एक्चुअली दैट इज नॉट बोन दैट इज द टॉक्सिन विच हैज गॉट एक्यूमुलेटेड एट एट द एंड ऑफ द बोन स्पेशली इन केस ऑफ रिमोटाइड आर्थराइटिस और गाउट ओके यू नीड टू वर्क ऑन बोथ सर रिमोटाइड आर्थराइटिस ये सब कुछ ना हो सिर्फ ऐसे ही वहां पे पेन हो रहा और हड्डी थोड़ी बढ़ गई हो तो फिर वो क्या होता है रिमोटाइड आर्थराइटिस कहां की बढ़ी है हेलो जी हड्डी कहाँ की बड़ी है सर नी के नीचे नी के नीचे कहाँ पे सर बाहर की तरफ थोड़ी सी लेफ्ट नी में मैं वो, अब अब मेरे को ना देखना पड़ेगा आपकी हिस्ट्री नहीं पड़ेगी ऐसे ऐसे पॉसिबल नहीं है ओके ओके सर थैंक यू कैन कांटेक्ट मी पर्सनली ओके डॉक्टर वन वन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द चैट बॉक्स कैन बी इम्प्रूव देंस विच वी गेट फ्रॉम देंट्स इफ इट इज पुअर while on our birth uh, and does it can be improved in later life see if it is deficient from the parents then it is a uh, so if you are having some kind of hereditary diseases um uh, that is a bit difficult okay but definitely in this uh, if you are perfectly all right and uh, you want to improve your essence yes you can do moxa at cv4 or needling at cv4 or you can simply put a bold magnet at cv4 and tonify it or you you can moxa it you know sujok mein to you all know that you you don't you tonify with the moxa in your points at cv4 those points so i'll suggest keep better if you just do some moxa at cv4 and du4 very very important then don't do overwork have a balanced diet and do, don't uh, go for ex- excess of uh, sexual activity because that is the factor which depletes the essence the overwork nowadays in a, is another factor which is uh, which is weakening the essence very much you don't you could don't come to know that your essence is getting weak so just keep a balance of everything definitely it can be improved but in case of hereditary diseases if you if uh, if, some, if some patient is having some hereditary disease we can try to reduce the symptoms and discomfort but if you need if you say we can cure it it, it is a bit harsh to say that we next chance goes it. to okay. anish ravindra anish please unmute Anita, Anita Todi. Ah, uh, sir, I just wanted to know how to improve defensive uh, this thing uh, essence, and also can you kindly repeat, like uh, what, what you said that uh, hereditary can be like if you are healthy, you can be, you know, bet do better for your thing. So you said uh, tonification of what? Like just can you repeat yourself? yeah tonification of uh, du4 or uh, gv governing vessel 4 hmm tonification of uh, ren4 or cv yani conception vessel 4 okay you can okay. also tonify K- k3 also okay you can you can also if there is some problem with the marrow 
marrow marrow mm-hmm. means some brain brain issue is there mm-hmm. like C, cp patient mm-hmm. uh, so mental retarded so you can also tonify gb4 uh, sorry uh, okay. uh, 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 gb39 gold okay. letter 39 you can okay. also tonify in case of bone diseases related to deficient um, mm-hmm. the kidneys you can also uh, uh, tonify ub11 okay, mm-hmm. urinary bladder 11 so these are some points which will help the patients and then mm-hmm. again it depends on the symptoms what symptoms the patient is having local okay. points distal point we mm-hmm. have to take okay and uh, how to improve the defensive uh, toni- uh, yeah, tonify the lungs toni- tonify the lungs lung 9 stomach 36 okay cv 17 do pranayam a uh, simple way to do is uh, what i do is mm. uh, i start with deep breathing and okay. i try to keep uh, and i try to hold the breath okay try okay. to hold it as much as possible it is mm-hmm. very it has a very very wonderful result very simple way and uh, see pranayam has a, a bit of discipline to it okay. so definitely mm-hmm. you must do it you okay. must do that but and, uh, mm-hmm. but but this this holding the breath has a very uh, it doesn't need some some uh, principles to do it's a simple process you can do it any time ah uh, that way i'm a gold medalist in yoga from bombay okay. university so then, then i don't need to tell you <laughs> uh, i uh, and one more question out of uh, curiosity like um, generally you know p- people uh, have tooth decay very common can it be recovered by uh, acupuncture tooth decay yeah cavities and no, all sorry things. sorry Because, sorry uh, huh. okay. let me tell you dental part is the only thing which you can mm. not treat by any 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 therapy you need to visit a dental surgeon first okay. of all okay ah, that thank you for clarifying thank you so much okay hello no yeah, good evening yeah yeah good evening uh, good evening sir sir uh, uh, wife is uh, frequently she is getting uh, swearing suddenly but there is no fever nothing suddenly she getting a swear for uh, 15 20 minutes then after that it will uh, set it as it is okay, what is so the problem it is uh, from last uh, one or two years so it could be due to wind also it's not due to some infection it could be due to wind some shivering happens some tremors have ha- tremors you can say tremors na some kind of yeah, tremors yeah. are happening ha it could be due to liver yin deficiency so yeah. but still I, i'm just telling you the major cause of it so i have to see uh, what what specific it is so it's not it's not due to some fever so it it is mainly wind 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 is getting yeah. generated the why it is getting generated i have to see that it's whether it's due to yin deficiency or blood deficiency or uh, kidney deficiency i have to see that so you can okay. message me personally and we'll go accordingly okay. okay okay can we get your number sir Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll. sure. Uh, you will get it through the Joshi's Kerala group. Okay. Now the chance goes to Anish. Okay, then. thank you. Thank you, sir. Anish Shrivendra, would you please speak? Neema. Ah, uh, good evening, doctor. i had a query actually when you were explaining this sweating of palms right so you said the lungs are not able to hold the fluid and that's why it comes in the palm so you know like can you just let me know how to treat it tonify lungs very simple tonify lungs alpana good evening sir um so i i just want to understand a certain problem in terms of essence and uh, key uh, like something like plantar fasces i've seen that it happens on the right uh, heel and left heel with a certain uh, like right heel is uh, how uh, we treat it is sometimes with the the stomach meridian and the left is treated by the spleen meridian so like how do we explain this in your uh, in Plantar terms of fasciitis uh, yeah ha ji treating plantar fasciitis by stomach and spleen channel okay 
so no i so, simple i mean um, hmm. so no, what a is simple the problem mudra. i would just work on mudras like i would just reduce i would just reduce the yin uh, sorry i said it opposite i just reduce the yin uh, um you what i do what what i do and that helps the re- yeah right it, again you have to find out you have to find out what is the root cause usually what i feel there is a what, what is the most common cause is the uh, chi does not flow sufficiently to that part okay chi does not flow sufficiently to that part of the heel okay now so what what chi would we talk about what chi doesn't flow the nutritive chi flowing in that particular area nutritive chi maybe it could be due to uh deficiency urinary bladder channel it could be deficiency in the kidneys it could be uh kidney channel the chi is not flowing i'm not saying kidney is deficient i'm saying i'm telling you that the chi is not okay. flowing in that channel itself okay both are different things chi flowing in a channel is a different and chi okay. of an organ is a different okay so plantar fasciitis is mainly that chi is not flowing yeah. into that area into that a particular channel so find out that channel and move the chi you will get okay. the result mostly it takes around 3 uh, so, to 4 sittings usually okay. so say what i do is within seconds uh, if i reduce the humidity yin humidity with the mudra within few seconds the pain just goes so how do we explain this still able to get it i'm telling you i'm not i'm not able to no what i'm saying is if you're reducing it no what i'm saying is if you're trying to reduce the humidity uh, of yin humidity that is clean energy if you're trying so to reduce the be, clean energy in, ha huh, it could be in your case it could be the case that humidity might be obstructing the flow of chi in that area that's it see you don't get okay. confused with so how what do i have taught you this is a tot- see what i have taught you is a totally different concept so what you are asking is see chi moving in a channel is a different thing and what we discuss is a totally different concept so plantar fasciitis mostly is happening due to obstruction in chi or chi is not flowing into that area so either the chi is deficient one case the chi will not be able to move okay and the other the chi is sufficient it's not weak but it is getting obstructed by some pathogenic factors it could be humidity in your case so if humidity is obstructing the chi okay. uh, uh the chi will be obstructed and you will feeling some pain and if you are removing that uh, you are sedating that uh, humidity then you are getting uh, the chi moving to that area and you are getting no pain this is this this you can, this is how you can explain this, this, nothing related to what we discussed earlier right right thank you I... okay no no, no sir and this is not this is now reka bolani ha hello sir yeah ha uh, it says the nutritive chi is can be deficient a deficiency of the umbilical hernia what the nutritive chi can be due to deficiency of umbilical hernia no due to deficiency of umbilical hernia nutritive chi yes sir uh not exactly but it can matlab it's not certain you cannot say that it will be happening but it can lead to see ultimately you have to tonify why umbilical hernia is happening this is what you need to understand you have to find out the root cause whether it's due to liver problem whether whether it is due to deficiency of spleen chi it's not moving upwards so umbilical hernia can happen in case of deficiency deficient spleen and stomach okay so if stomach and spleen are deficient the nutritive chi will be deficient if the case is stomach and spleen chi deficiency okay yes so can uh, can we tonify yeah you can tonify I but you have to find out that the cause of umbilical hernia is nutritive is is deficiency of stomach and spleen okay is a healthy woman is it uh, how to manage healthy hai weight kya hai unka mm-hmm. see i have to see the, that see i have to see the tongue 
फॉर ए पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम देर कुड बी मोर देन वन इशूज ओके इट कुड बी ड्यू टू लिवर ऑल्सो so yeah. i have to rule out i have to rule out that why it is happening without looking at the patient without hearing its symptom i cannot simply say that you have to purify stomach 36 okay suppose it is due yeah. to something problem with the liver then stomach 36 is not going to help you much okay okay so you have to see the root cause why it's happening it can be due to the stom- if it is due to stomach and spleen deficiency you can definitely you need to tonify stomach uh, stomach uh, 36 you need to tonify the local points as, uh, as well moxa would be a great help in such cases if it is due to deficiency of stomach and spleen anish revindra will you please try to uh, unmute and talk you will be the last person already got a message from anish ravindra as he got some minor tissue okay how can we understand kidney infection so for that you have to read about uh, you have to understand about the kidney yin deficiency and kidney yang de- yang deficiency in both the cases the symptoms are different in both the cases the pulse positions are different you have you need to study the pulse diagnosis as well you need to study the tongue diagnosis as well because in both the cases the there is a big difference okay we will uh, continue the session from dr lavkateria tomorrow and day after uh, so you can come with more questions more doubts and you will be with the uh, zoom classes for uh, next two days also you will get more knowledge more upgradation thank you dr lavkataria thank you all participants and good night all thank you so much now for the day we will uh, leave this meeting and tomorrow we'll meet again at 8 o'clock thank you all good night all